Uh, welcome to the Edge of NFT podcast with your hosts, Jeff Kelly, Ethan Janney, and Josh Krieger. We aim to bring you not only the top 1% of what's going on with NFTs today, but also what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts in the business side and also the human element of how NFTs are changing the way we interact with the things that we love. This podcast is for the futurists and dreamers, the disruptors and creators, the fans and connectors, and the makers and doers that are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. Today's episode features guest Simon Carotonagoro. I hope I said that appropriately. Yeah, no, you said that better than I say, <laughs> to be honest with you. And, uh, and a special guest uh, host, Ira Liss, who we'll introduce later. But um, for now, Simon, let's give a little intro on him. He's a VP of Developer Success at Engine. Simon plays an integral role in providing development and marketing consultancy for the projects who use Engine's tools. A connector within the business, Simon works with the support team to produce documentation, the marketing team to produce thought leadership content, the business development team to assist in the onboarding of new projects, and the development team to understand the needs of the developer ecosystem. So we're excited to hear about all that. Simon, thanks for joining us today. CNBC Tech, people in the Philippines are earning cryptocurrency during the pandemic by playing a video game. Axie Infinity allows players to learn income through non-fungible tokens and cryptos. Players breed, battle, and trade digital pets called Axies. A new mini documentary called Play to Earn follows several Filipino people who play the game. So this is interesting, especially just, you know, we've got Simon here is in gaming and and it's interesting to hear your perspective on this and to see like how this is touching developing areas, right? Where the, or where the economy is contracted or they're having problems. You know, I know we talked about Acoin earlier. So yeah, this is actually a really fascinating. And then the complaint here is, you know, cryptos are volatile and I guess, you know, should, should these people really be spending their time engaged in this game as opposed to other things? What are your thoughts on this, Simon? Yeah, I read that one of them bought a house in the Philippines um, from playing the game. So it's it's really amazing. And this is um this is like this has been around for a while. Like you you know uh, have you guys ever heard of RuneScape, that classic um, MMO uh, that's uh, like it's been around for like twenty years or something. Like that's huge uh, in Venezuela. And there's some there's some gold farmers that just grind for gold and then set, then they have to kind of um, you know, someone has to pay them on PayPal and then they have to meet them in game and drop the, drop the gold on the floor. And then someone picks up the gold and then, you know, it's this really long winded way to make the transfer. Some of these guys are, are earning more than lawyers over in Venezuela where their, their economy is just in really dire straits. So um, earning more than Venezuelan lawyers or yeah, Venezuela, <laughs> okay. Venezuelan lawyers. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, I think, I think gaming, um, provides a really, uh, a, a really tangible solution um, for for the for the problems that are the 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 economy is is facing now and will be facing even more in the future, um, and like um, yeah, the, this 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 ability for people to collaborate through the gaming space, provide each other services through the gaming space, um, get to know each other through the gaming space. Um, you know, all of that is going to just be um, made more tangible by real value connecting them. Because if we think about our communities, like they are so connected by our economy, it's just ridiculous. Um, like, the economy really connects us as humans because it's how we work together. It's how we collaborate. It's how we, we have all of these systems in place that allows us to function as a collaborative society. Putting that into games um, allows people to do the same thing, except you can do it with people all around the world. Um, and I think that that's just so valuable for not only um, people in developing developing countries that are really in need of money, but also people in Western countries who are really time poor and they, and, but they have, too much money or they or they at least have enough money to warrant saving time doing certain things in the game where they can collaborate with someone else and get them to do those things in the game that they don't want to do um so i think what this is all going to manifest in just super interesting ways and we're going to see a new form of economy uh come out of it like a a more creator driven economy a more passion driven economy a more collaborative economy and um 
and and yeah, and I think as automation sets in as and basically takes a lot of manufacturing jobs, potentially a lot of services roles, I think this kind of creator economy is really going to be something that we will need to have there to fall back on in 10, 20 years to come. So um so yeah, I think it's a beautiful thing and and yeah, I really I'm really like glad to see that happening and I think it's we're going to see it happening a lot more. But so how profound how profound I mean the idea that everyone that can has access to a computer or phone can open it up and play a game and and earn a living and it's amazing it, it, it when you really think of it it, it it's a great equalizer and it potentially you know could solve a lot of problems around you know the yeah. the global global poverty if you will uh, through gaming and, and no one would have ever predicted that 10 years ago. We've seen this theme on our show consistently. We had the CEO of Digilax, Emma Jane, on our show recently. And, you know, she's allowing uh, independent gamers to sell clothing uh, in the metaverse while, to their fans that are watching the game. And so I, th- cool. I think you're you're talking about a possibility that is truly unlimited Mm, yeah that's that's specifically our goal at my metaverse we're really trying to create something that allows people to create value for each other i think like if we look at the past 10 years like like user generated content has just ruled the app and the game space like you know facebook is all user generated content instagram twitter Minecraft, like all of these, you know, a lot of the biggest platforms in the world, LinkedIn are all, it's all user generated content, um, except the, the, the user doesn't get paid to generate it. They just, they kind of get likes and, and they, they get hits of dopamine essentially. Um, I think the next um, paradigm is, is user generated value um, where people are creating value for each other. And, and that can mean infinite things. Um, it can mean content, but it can also mean like services within the digital space or just, you know, or just, for, you know, uh, collaboration and friendships. So um, I definitely think that's the next paradigm of gaming and social media. Um, and it just takes people to work out how to do it because people need it. People want it. Um, we just need to do it right and provide a great user experience. And, and that will be the new paradigm in my view. Yeah, Amazing potential to create social good. Yeah, I'm also just fascinated with this role that we're continuing to see of play and fun in a lot of these projects within the crypto and blockchain and, of course, the gaming space. But it's interesting to see how the economy of the future is integrating with things that are both fun and productive. And for me, that's very interesting in terms of what's to come for the way that we handle education in the future Mm. and also just like professions and how we serve each other, right? If we can make learning fun, training fun, um, you know, helping each other fun, providing a service fun, being creative fun and profitable, you know, why not, right? Get rid of the fear side of things, make everything a game. Because at this point, like you said, there's no lions chasing us. It's, it's all kind of for fun <laughs> and extra tokens or whatever. And um, yeah, I find that fascinating. All right. Well, we've reached the outer limit at the edge of NFTs for today. So thanks for exploring with us. We've got space for more adventures on this starship. So invite your friends and recruit some cool strangers that will make this journey all so much better. How? Go to iTunes right now, rate us and say something cool, then go to edgeofnft.com to dive further down the rabbit hole.